Apple cider vinegar is quite popular and many people use it to improve weight loss and blood sugar management. But are those effects of apple cider vinegar actually real? In this video I'm going to talk about whether or not you should take apple cider vinegar every day and what are the benefits. Do it! I think a good place to start with is a 2020 meta-analysis on vinegar consumption on glycemic control in uh, adults with type 2 diabetes. And they did find that among th about 317 patients, uh, using the uh, apple cider vinegar was beneficial for fasting blood sugar levels and hemoglobin A1c, which reflects the average blood glucose levels over the past few weeks. This meta-analysis review extends the evidence on the beneficial effects of uh, vinegar on glycemic control as measured by hemoglobin A1c and fasting blood glucose. Clinicians could incorporate vinegar consumption as part of their dietary advice for patients with diabetes. And that is the most powerful effect of apple cider vinegar or any kinds of vinegar, uh, like white vinegar, etc. They all have have beneficial effects on glycemic control and uh, managing blood sugar levels as well as lipids and uh, there are like uh, multiple you know, mechanisms why vinegar can lower your blood sugar levels. These mechanisms include one activation of the free fatty acid receptor 2 receptors localized in the enteroendocrine L cells of the intestinal lumen leading to increased glucagon like peptide 1 uh, GLP-1 secretion. <laughs> so yeah like GLP-1 is this um, Increntin, as it's called, it's a, like insulin analogous to insulin and helps with insulin secretion and helps with actually suppressing glucagon. So it lowers your glucose production by the liver and uh, with the increase of insulin, it will also help to clear the bloodstream. So, I mean, insulin isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually part of the reason why people who have diabetes stay with high blood sugar levels is that they don't produce enough insulin and uh, making your body produce insulin with these insulin uh, sensitizing agents and uh, mimetics or GLP-1 agonists for example like vinegar essentially uh, then that will have a positive effect on the blood glucose levels as well. Number two is AMPK activation which uh, is this uh, you know it's an energy sensor that promotes ketosis and uh, fat burning as well. So you burn through fatty, acid, fatty acids as well. And many people don't know actually that diabetes also results from elevated lipotoxicity. So too high free fatty acids in the blood pretty much suppress insulin uh, production and uh, damage the pancreatic beta cells as well, which is part of the reason why people develop diabetes like this lipotoxicity. So too high triglycerides in the blood and uh, with apple cider vinegar, you basically help to burn through those uh, triglycerides and fatty acids. Number three, lowering of free fatty acid in circulation. So part of that reason, potentially leading to improved insulin sensitivity. Number four, increased blood flow to the peripheral tissues. And number five, increased satiety, leading to lower food intake. So obviously calorie intake is also quite important when it comes to managing your blood sugar levels and uh, risk of obesity and diabetes overall. And another 2017 meta-analysis of clinical trials found that uh, vinegar can be effective in reducing postprandial glucose and insulin levels. So postprandial means after a meal. So whenever you eat, then naturally your blood sugar levels would rise to a certain extent depending on the glycemic index and glycemic load of the meal as well as your particular insulin sensitivity. So if you eat, let's say, a lot of carbohydrates, then uh, yeah, your blood sugar levels are going to be much higher after eating a meal. But there's also the things that your basal insulin sensitivity determines that, how much muscle you have, whether or not you're sedentary, whether or not you have exercised, or whether or not you take apple cider vinegar, for example, all those things, you know, determine the postprandial glucose levels. And having too high postprandial glucose levels for too long after a meal, it is associated with increased risk of diabetes and even uh, coronary artery disease as well. So you don't want to have like a very abnormal uh, chronically elevated blood sugar and insulin level after eating so it's better to kind of lower it down as fast as possible you don't need to like lower it immediately like taking like some sort of a drug or, or whatever but uh, within a few hours your blood sugar level should be normalized even if you eat a relatively large meal and there are actually studies showing that uh, combining vinegar with a high carb meal like white bread or potatoes or cereal or whatever or ice cream <laughs> whatever it is uh, that's food that is going to raise your blood sugar high, quite high with a high glycemic index and combining the vinegar with that meal actually lowers the the glucose response the postprandial glucose response by up to 50 percent in those meals so as you can see from this image then uh, vinegar is this white square and it uh, pretty much lowers or results in much lower insulin and glucose levels or glucose area under the curve compared to a placebo. 
vinegar or peanut ingestion reduced the 60-minute glucose response to both test meals by approximately 55%. But uh, these reductions were significant only for the high glycemic load meal. So yeah, combining even things like fiber, protein, nuts and seeds has actually also been shown to lower the postprandial glucose uh, response. So uh, vinegar is usually added to like salad dressing and vegetables and things like that, like um, the Mediterranean diet. They eat olive oil, they eat uh, vinegar as well, they combine it in there. Vinegar supplementation lowers glucose and insulin responses and increases satiety after a bread meal in healthy subjects. So it does specifically work the most effective in lowering the glucose response if the meal is high glycemic. It's going to have a less of an effect if it's low glycemic. If you eat already low carb and keto, which uh, that meal isn't going to raise your blood sugar even that high, then uh, you're going to see less of an effect. It might improve some aspects of the digestion even by boosting stomach acid, for example, but uh, you're going to see the biggest response or the biggest benefit of taking apple cider vinegar if you eat like a high glycemic carbohydrate meal. An ice cream, an apple pie, and diabetes. Some of the bioactive compounds that mediate the benefits of the lowering of blood sugar and the cholesterol lowering effects etc in the vinegar they are acetic acid primarily then there's things like gallic acid catechin epicatechin chlorogenic acid caffeic acid cumaric acid and ferulic acid and when it comes to like weight loss and body fat loss then there are some studies in humans showing that uh, it might help uh, with uh, that by reducing uh, triglycerides reducing the glucose response and yeah, helping to burn some of the visceral fat specifically around the organs. Of course, you still need to be in a calorie deficit, but vinegar, if it suppresses your appetite, it reduces your food intake, then it enables you to achieve and reach calorie deficit much more easily, and you're not going to overeat either. People who take vinegar with meals typically end up eating 200 to 275 fewer calories for the rest of the day. Vinegars also have antibacterial properties that help to eliminate various pathogens such as E. coli and Candida. This can prevent the development of microbial dis biosis that can have a negative effect on your weight loss and glucose tolerance. So as you can see, vinegar specifically is the best for lowering triglycerides, cholesterol, as well as lowering blood sugar levels and the benefits of insulin sensitivity and uh, lowering glucose specifically after a meal comes if you eat like a higher carb meal. But most people also take vinegar on an empty stomach in the fastest state and there are benefits to doing that as well by activating AMPK which then helps to speed up fat oxidation and helps you to go into deeper autophagy and these other you know longevity pathways that get activated from the activation of AMPK. So I think taking a little bit of apple cider vinegar on an empty stomach in the morning is pretty good and you definitely want to combine it with the meals by adding to your salad dressing and uh, take it maybe with water if you're not having salad for example. To get the required amount amount of acetic acid for blood sugar regulation, you need about one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, which if you don't add to salad as dressing, you should dilute in about eight ounces of water. Acetic acid can be harmful to your throat and teeth when you consume it alone, so that's why you need to dilute it with water. Apple cider vinegar is 5-6% to acetic acid, but the other types of vinegar, like distilled vinegar and white vinegar, are generally much higher. So, in conclusion, apple cider vinegar is great, it's very beneficial for managing blood sugar levels and especially combining it with a high-carb meal. But, do you like carbs? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological age. If you're interested, then send me an email to info at seamland.com and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.